Let's take a look at EOS on this week's article for Brave New Coin. So if we look at all the market caps, the top 10 coins here, we can see the EOS is snugly fit between LTC and BNB. Two coins that cannot be more different from each other. BNB is an exchange token. LTC is a proof of work coin. EOS uses a proof of stake validator model, which are known as block producers, similar to XRP and XR XLM, as well as XTZ, all of which use a validator type model. They call it different things, but that's pretty much what it boils down to. But together, they all follow BTC. There's no winners or losers here. I don't have Link on here because Link, for some reason, doesn't load occasionally on TradingView. Uh, but Link is probably the only winner winner here, which is between BNB and XTZ. But you don't need a correlation coefficient to see that all of these move nearly identically, despite it being completely different from each other. So if we look at the validators, the top 21, so there's 100 or so that can be rotated in and out. These are voted on. The voting is kind of skewed and fake <laughs> because there's a lot of ballot stuffing, especially for the exchanges. So you'll see uh, Huobi, Nudex, Bitfinex, OKCoin, and there are a few others that aren't in the top 21, but they kind of vote stuff themselves, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, uh, what you'll notice about the validators is most of them are in Asia. So if you're on the POS bandwagon, proof of stake bandwagon, because of the decentralization capabilities that are not necessarily provided in the mega minor ASICs in proof of work, you're going to be sorely mistaken here because there isn't a lot of diversity amongst the validators, in my opinion. Most of them are in China. So you're, you're having the same problem you do with proof of work. It's sort of concentrated in Asia, concentrated in China. Something to consider there. If we look at transactions per day, which is the line here, and the fill, which is blocks per day, the first thing that pops out to me is the all-time high in transactions, which was part of a airdrop mess <laughs> to see how many transactions could be run uh, to get this airdrop. Uh, and then the chunk out of the blocks per day because the network got so bogged down after this, it was just crushed for months and the stat is right in front of your eyes here blocks per day just went uh, dropped way down i don't know what percentage this is but it's certainly significant uh over since february in recent months you know it's prop popped right back up to where it was uh, transactions per day look much more organic to me you're not getting this mega day-to-day -day variation especially here i don't know what this is you know i don't know what any of this is it doesn't really make sense um, but to see it like slowly crawling up to highs and very minimal variation day to day makes a lot more sense to me if, if it's organic activity. If we look at RAM costs, which are similar to gas costs on EOS, they had a big problem in mid-2019 when a bunch of people started hoarding RAM and there wasn't enough supply to be used to create accounts to move EOS around, that sort of thing. Uh, so what they ended up doing, the BPs agreed to just dump a bunch of RAM on the market. And that's what happened to drop the price here. And it's controlled it ever since. Looking at the dApps, you'll notice that most of these are gambling dApps. Most of these have pretty high transactions. This is per week. And Nudex certainly has decent volume uh, for a DEX over the course of a week. Again, EOS transactions are essentially free, so it makes more sense to have gambling dApps on EOS than it does on ETH. ETH top dApps have been dominated by DeFi type stuff recently, lending, that sort of thing. You're still going to see gambling dApps on ETH. You're just not going to see the fervor for gambling dApps on ETH simply because of the on-chain costs. All right, let's take a look at price. I have Bitfinex long short ratio RSI, which I used as a momentum indicator for extreme highs, extreme lows in price, bullish and bearish divergences, that sort of thing. I have yearly pivots, which are mathematically calculated based on the previous year's high and low, as well as VPVR, which is volume at a specific price rather than volume per day, and the 50 and the 200 EMAs. So you can see open interest on March 12th dropped pretty significantly in the, the longs here that happened on every exchange, every asset, open interest got hit pretty hard all over the board. 
So there's no real uniqueness here. Longs are still accounting for 90% of total open interest. I really only look at most of the open interest data on Bitfinex when it's at the extremes. I kind of use it as an oscillator in that regard. So if price is at an all-time high, longs are at an all-time high. It's concerning because it says it's a pretty crowded trade. Everyone who wanted to be long is likely already long, or the probability is that there are more people at this point who would rather be short than long. And shortly after that, longs came down pretty significantly as price came down. So a type of a long squeeze there, a type of a long squeeze here, where you get a sudden drop in open interest for longs or shorts, and that has a big effect on price. Uh, no extremes in RSI over the past few weeks, uh, but March 12th was certainly a multi-month low in RSI. Always a good sign that a bottom is in or a bottom is near when we get this oversold on uh, in a vacuum. You know, this always this always looks like a buy. This always looks like a sell. <laughs> Volume spiked pretty high. Again, not unique to on March 12th, not unique to EOS. That was across the board on everything. Levels I'd be looking for on the way up here are um, 350, which is basically the 200, four bucks, which is this VPVR zone, 475 or whatever this yearly pivot is, this local high at five. So there's a ton of resistance on the way up. You know, there's a lot of volume on this slog down throughout 2019. So there's likely going to be a pretty big mess on the way up and a reconsolidation to sort of retake this yearly pivot and attempt to break the local high there. Looking at the pitchfork, which is nothing more than a trend channel with specific rules. It's got anchor points at highs and lows. And when you see a trend channel or pitchfork with this degree of obeying the rules in that it's within the bounds over the past two years, let's say, two years plus maybe, you can say that the median line is a magnet for price so long as price remains inside the pitchfork. So magnet, 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 down, magnet, magnet, up, magnet, 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 up, magnet. And here we are. Unless it breaks 377, it's going to continue to just range in here all the way down to zero. <laughs> or it breaks the local highs here. It's interesting that the voice announcements were nearly perfect local highs in price. Sort of a buy the rumor, sell the news type thing. Especially when uh, Voice wasn't even launched on EOS, it was launched on a separate chain, at least the beta version of it. So in order to be long-term bullish on EOS, it, would, it needs to break this, this trend that it's been in for two years because it's just going to continue to get denied at the upper diag here and bounce right back down to the, the median line. Looking at the cloud, again on March 10th, it dropped below the daily cloud, which is first sign of bearishness, first sign of trouble. It had a nice little head and shoulders situation here. A lot of coins did. And then it just got this overperformance to the downside as uh, liquidity evaporated everywhere. So it put in this range, this high, this low, and it didn't make a higher high or a higher low. So the cloud is going to draw this flat Kijun, flat Kumo. This is going to be a magnet for price. It's mean reversion territory background 350, 365, whatever that is. And then lastly on EOS BTC, I actually like where it sits now because it's back in the previous eight month accumulation zone. It didn't close a lower low. Uh, on the candles, it might have wicked to a lower low, but it held the support. So if it was accumulation before, it should act as accumulation again, especially with this mega volume in this range here. It just says there's a lot of interest in uh, buyers and sellers sort of coming to an equilibrium here at this level. Uh, no massive lower low in RSI here, no divergences per se. There was sort of a low time frame divergence here as uh, price melted day over day. RSI kind of stopped dipping. Uh, but as far as the upside, I'd be looking to the 200 EMA, the flat cloud here at around 45,000 sats. I'd be looking at 60,000 sats, yearly pivot, local high, previous run. And then beyond that, these VPVR levels, 80,000 and maybe 70,000.